Hi children. Vedic period. What was the economic system then? Let's go through one by one. They depended on animal husbandry. You know what's animal husbandry? Keeping animals, rearing animals and looking after their welfare. Now that's called as animal husbandry. They had cattle, horses, sheep, camels. So they had become a part and parcel of the human family. Where, wherever man went, they followed him. So they supported his life. He had to look after them. He should see they don't contract diseases. They are properly fed. They are taken care of. Because they proved to be his wealth. If the animals keep good health, they give a very good support for man in pursuing his life. So there was a close link, a connection between man and animal. Wealth meant cows. I have given other animals too. Mainly cows and horses. Society used to decide how wealthy a person is by knowing as to how many cows he has. Pashu Sampattu. If he has a thousand cows, yes, he is a very wealthy person in this society. He has no cows, he is a poor person. So cows proved to be the wealth of a person. Wealth meant no cash then, no notes or digital wealth. Land was not a source of wealth at all. Land was available freely everywhere. You go and mark a land and say it is yours. No one would question. Land did not have any value at all. It is the Vedic period. So what is the only wealth one can possess? It is Pashu Sampattu or animal wealth. He took lot of care of the cows. Science cows, he cannot lead a life. Horses, camels and sheep. He goes to the extent of worshipping a cow. Felt God has made his presence here in the form of a cow. So he loved them. He had utmost affection for the cows from the bottom of his heart. No life without cows. Because cows provided the milk and all time food. Even if you do not get anything in the surrounding, have a glass of milk and you are perfectly alright. You have the source of energy. See here, they have shown a number of gods and goddesses on the body of the cow. Even today, ardent Hindus believe that cow is an embodiment of the Almighty. They worship the cow. They don't like the idea of cows being slaughtered for meat. They oppose it. Even if a cow is old, an arch Hindu takes care of that old cow. It may not be yielding milk. It's not of any use to him. But it has given him milk for 8 to 10 years earlier, no? His kids have grown with the milk of that cow. He wants to be grateful for that cow. Till its last breath, he will give it bath. He will have a cozy bed for the cow to sleep. He will feed it well. He will talk to this cow sitting by its side and take care of it. He believed that the Almighty is there with the cow. If he does anything bad for that animal, it would have the karma impact on him. So he used to treat cow as cow goddess. That's what this picture explains to you. You see all the gods and goddesses here set on the body of the cow in different places and they had even those places restricted, fixed places for them. Whenever there is a festival or whenever there is an important 
courts in the house they used to do aarti and worship the cow okay cultivation cultivating land was considered a profession you have to grow crops that became a profession some people started getting themselves wedded committed to crops growing crops agriculture slowly it is taking the shape of a profession now some people absolutely committed themselves to that job and growing grains grains not only for themselves growing for others anyone could have obtained the land i told you land was free then you can go and mark an area and say this is my land no one question because land was in plenty if you want to do agriculture land is there you need not ask anyone clear the outgrowth there start tilling the land and start growing food no one would question you need not pay any tax even see how simple everything was today it's a complicated world cattle were used to till land what were the cattle doing cows and oxen and buffaloes even horses and camels they were used to till land mainly cattle oxen lift water from the depth from a well when they dig they get a well water has to be lifted so they used to have stone pulley see it's a, an innovation stone pulley he got them cut to size arranged used vines of uh, these plants as rope he made made it run and every time it comes up it brings a pail of water and from a height if you allow the water to flow it reaches his cultivated land so cattle were used to draw the pulleys he wanted the cattle cattle were used to till land tilling the land plowing the land till means not the preposition till here tilling the land plowing the land lift water move carts carts have to be moved carts have to be pulled oh these oxen were the right ones full of strength vigor they used to pull this pull the cart then expansion of agriculture even expanding agriculture you want to increase the area where you grow so in that the oxen or the cows played a vital role move carts and expansion of agriculture they were also a source of milk and meat they were a source of animals were a source of milk and meat grasslands were set aside for grazing so the evolution you see he thought we have to have some fixed land a separate piece of land kept for growth of grass so that the animals will have food all around the year so they started fixing lands only for growing grass they did not know the use of iron remember it in the vedic period man did not know the use of iron next with charcoal they melted metals metals like copper gold they are freely available in nature they are not in the form of compounds but anyhow he has to separate them from rocks how did he separate he used charcoal burnt wood when you burn wood you get red slices then they become black when they cool down that's what you call as charcoal iddalu with charcoal he started melting metals he has to melt and separate from the rock and he has to get get them turned into solids later metals later they knew agriculture that we have already seen he started growing crops weaving cotton you take out cotton make threads then weave and get the cloths made weaving carpentry from the wood bringing it into shape and making furniture 
may be simple furniture to bring me to start with slowly this got advanced it became a great skilled art cultivated land was called kshetra see the word kshetra is a sanskrit word 3500 years ago this word got evolved even today we use the word kshetra krishi kshetra krida kshetra kshetra means field cultivated land then they started the word to explain a cultivated land they called it kshetra and cultivation was called as krishi even to this day the word has not got changed krishi in all indian languages we use the word because it is a contribution from Sans sanskrit sanskrit words have maintained their form form in spite of a long period of evolution krishi kshetra these are words which we feel proud to pronounce dodda dodda shabda galu galala helu vaglu and cultivation was called krishi they used stone pulleys to lift water i explained you already stone pulleys to lift water from great depths canal system to irrigate canals from the place where you get water you have to drive it to the field you need canals for that and canal should be slopy water should freely flow once you lift it and pour it into the canal it should reach the agricultural kshetra agricultural field krishi kshetra close to areas close to rivers were used to grow food grains he learned i should be close to the river i need water so he did not have krishi kshetra somewhere else he started those kshetras very close to the rivers so water is available in plenty we will see the next frame political system what was the political system during the vedic period rigveda refers to the word grama you can make out the evolution the grama what we use today which means village it is a sanskrit word grama has come from the vedic period so each political unit they called it as grama raja was the head who is the head we say panchayat raj today raja the chairman so then the word coined was raja he is raja to his political unit conflict between aryans and non aryans i told you four castes and then the tribals were kept separate certain tribals they were dasyus and panis dasyus and panis those tribal groups were being kept separate they were not being allowed into the society they became untouchables conflict conflict was between aryans and these are non aryans dasyu and pani because they th thought they are a separate group they cannot belong to this main group so they were being kept separate assembly of common people for people were highly democratic spirit 3500 years ago we have dictatorship in many countries even today china has dictatorship they have not been able to evolve india is the only surviving big democracy in the world today besides america it's all because of the vedic culture from that period vedic people they felt people should come together discuss their problems and find solutions even if a raja is there he should have a sabha and samiti to discuss people's committees decide then suggestions come before the king he takes the final decision conflict between arya over assembly of common people sabha and samiti sabha of elders samiti of common people there each and every aspect pertaining to the society was being discussed people who ruled were kshatriyas people who ruled they were called as kshatriyas they had kshatra tejas in them they were kshatras those who had kshatra tejas in them they were kshatriyas they are yodhas they used to fight for their kingdom they used to protect their unit 
So the responsibility of seeing the people intact and seeing that they survive without any fear. It was the responsibility of the Raja. Raja is a Kshatriya. People who ruled were Kshatriyas. One who fights was known as Yodha. Today too we say Yodhas in the Indian military. Same words, Yodha. So these aspects should not be difficult to understand and remember. Yodhas. If you remember the words, you can explain. They were gifting animals, gifting away animals. Dana. Even today Dana is there. Rich people, they give Danas to the commoners or the poor. Dana. That is gifting animals or gold and cultivation tools. Later in Indian history, we say Krishna Devaraya used to give Danas, gifting away gold and animals. It all came from the Vedic period. They were gifting animals, gold and cultivation tools. Tools of cultivation like the plough. Plough gained a place of importance now. If you want to till the land, you need plough. Plough became a very important tool. So, giving away cultivation tools to those who cultivate. Invasions and conflicts used to happen to get cattle. See the beauty here. Not for money, not for ruling an area. There used to be fight. In order to take away the cattle, the other one possessed. Somebody has a thousand cattle, attack and try to take away the cattle. It was not something very common, but it used to, used to happen. It used to happen here and there. Trying to steal cattle. Because people thought, people who have cattle, they are the rich. We go to the next frame. Religious system. Religious system in practice then. You can very well tell we have discussed Yaga and Yajna. When you do any particular activity with an unselfish point of view to help others, you call it as Yajna. If a teacher is teaching very well, helping all the children, it is Vidya Yajna. You are giving away. You don't have any selfish point of view. Let others come up. Pick up. Yajna can be in any field. Yajna was the epicenter. Center means the central point. Epicenter of religious practices. Any religious practice will not be complete without a Yajna. You should have sacred fire and you should have shlokas recited by the priestly class who sit all around. And you need, you have to do lot of sacrifices to fire. Agni Devata, Agni God, he had a very important place, Agni. Agni's wife was Swaha. All these ideas came up then, Swaha. Even today, when you offer something to Agni, you call Swaha and tell her, please carry this gift of mine and give it to Agni. You say, any offer you make, let us say, Gritha, Gritham Swaha. That means, I have a pail of ghee here, Swaha, oh, Swaha, please take it and offer it to your God. Every time you gift away, you call Swaha. When a Yaga is performed, you can hear it again and again. To get rains, see, animal sacrifices to propitiate gods. Animals were being sacrificed to fire or sacrificed in a place where gods are worshipped. What did they sacrifice? They sacrificed mainly animals. But certain, in certain places, they used to be in the form of kind. Kind. It can be something like herbs 
or uh, things that are available around those being offered to God. To get rains, to get rains, when you don't have rains, when you are drought, you started propitiating Indra. Indra was the rain of gods. He has to be made happy. He has to worship. To get rains, harvest. To have a good harvest, a good crop, you used to propitiate or pray to God. Defeating enemies. You have the fear of the enemies. Before you proceed for a war, you used to propitiate the God and then proceed to declare a war. You used to turn victorious the thought. With the blessings of the God, they would win over. Reciting shlokas, it was a part of the then religious tradition. You had to recite shlokas. Even today, lots of shlokas from Rigveda, the priestly class, they recite in the temples while worshipping the God. Consumption of soma, drink. Soma was a drink they got from plants. They used to drink soma. Soma drink. A soma drink they used to have before conducting any worship. It was a part of the process of worship, the tradition of worship. No idol worship, no symbols. An important thing to be remembered in the Vedic period, idols were not there. They did not have the figure of Shiva or Vishnu or anything. No idols. God was formless. God did not have any form. No symbols. You did not have symbols. This Om symbol and such symbols were not there. All these came up in the post-Vedic period. We will come to that next. Prominence to the God of fire. I told you, God of fire, he had a central place. He had an important place. He was called as Agni. Lord Indra was worshipped for rain. The other Lord, Lord Indra. At a later stage, Rudra appears as Shiva. So one more God appears who was all-powerful God. He was called Rudra. In the post-Vedic period, Rudra becomes Shiva. But no reference to Vishnu. Still, Vishnu has not appeared. These three murtis come into appearance later, at a later stage. We move to the next frame. Minor gods. See, there is no question of Hinduism here. It is not dharma. It is a practice. Altogether, it is a practice. It is a process of life. It is a methodology how people live. There is no founder to Hinduism. You don't find anyone who established Hindu religion. It doesn't have Adi. It, there's no beginning to Hindu religion. There's no Antya. A religion without Adi and Antya. Without any form. Without any set practice. There's a lot of freedom. Minor gods. Kshetrasya Pati. Even today we say Kshetra Pati. If there's a village, that village has a god. Kshetra Prati. If a field is there, that field will have a god. Kshetrasya. One who is adored in reference to that Kshetra. Kshetrasya Pati. Pati means Raja. The important person who rules. Pati Patni. There too it is the same thing. Patriarchal family. Pati rules. God of plough. For plough became an important tool you see. Without plough you cannot grow crops. You cannot till the field. So they started worshipping the plough before using the plough. That he should not counter any problem as he starts off his job of agriculture. Now Sita Devi, she was considered as the goddess of plough. 
Sita Devi was obtained by Janaka later when he was ploughing the field. In a box he found Sita Devi. So the connectivity to you get later too. House DT. Every house had a DT. People used to think, my house is protected by this DT. I should be thankful to it. He says that I don't come across any tragedy in life. Everything moves smooth. So how's DT? What is DT? God. Every house had a DT. So as many people, as many gods in Hinduism. Multitude of gods. Vasutoshapati. See, today we say Vastu. Every house had a Vasutoshpati, Vastu. House should be constructed in this pattern. The fireplace should be here. The water should be kept here. The tank should be built here. We say no, there's Vastu. And house should have the door in this particular direction. That is to please Vastupati. You are pleasing Vastupati. You don't want to overcome those rules and regulations. Vasutoshpati. For that too, you had a God there. Language was based on phonetics. What's phonetics? Expression. You pronounce, you speak, you utter, you talk with the help of your tongue. So what you pronounce from the tongue is phonetics. From your throat, the sound box here and the tongue movement of your lips and the teeth. All these help you in producing the kind of sound you need. That is what we call Phonetics. Children who join the school, they start learning how to move their tongue, how to move their lips. The teacher te teaches them. So phonetics, the science of sound, the science of sounds that you produce. No art of writing. Vedic people did not know to write. Script had not developed. There was no script. So, the tax, the pressure, emphasis was on remembering. You have to remember. No art of writing, you have to recite out. Every disciple, student in an ashram, under a guru, he had to learn things by heart. He should be able to recite from the heart. Similarities between Rig Veda and Avesta, Indo-Iranian religious text. Avesta, you must have heard of Zoroastrian religion. Zoroastrian. Zoroastrian religion is one of Parsis. In Mumbai, you find areas where lots of Parsis live. Parsis belong to Zoroastrian religion. They have their religious text, Avesta, Avesta. In Avesta, Avesta and Vedas have a lot in common. Because both these evolved from the same root. So you find similarities. Parsis have a lot of things similar to the Hindu culture. Parsis have the tradition of leaving the dead bodies intact on a tall gopuram for birds to come and eat away. Even after the death of a person, this body, instead of getting it consecrated through fire or getting it buried, let it be food for animals and birds. Let them come and eat away. Even on death, let my body be useful to others. See, what great thoughts in a way. All these show how we were culturally superior. So Zoroastrianism, their Avista and on the other hand the Vedas have a lot of things in common. Next. Here we have shown how the religious texts appear. In the beginning I told you, when I say text, you should not think of social studies text. No, nothing in written form. Text in oral form. 
text can be in oral form when you remember everything of a particular chapter the text is here then we can print it and file it then it's printed it has script so religious texts they are divided into two forms shrutis shruti what is shruti what you can orally express smriti what you can record what you can record is smriti what you orally pronounce is shruti to sing you need shruti isn't it to sing you need the right shruti others no one will listen sit and listen here vedas are shrutis to begin with vedas were shrutis samhita we call them as samhita because samhita is a collection collection of veda shlokas shlokas from different sources put together it became samhita samhitas gave rise to brahmana brahmana was they they were the traditions how things would run then you had aranyakas aranyakas in the deep forests how rishis maharshis yogis they sat doing tapas doing tapas and they came out with various propositions meanings philosophical depth meanings to whatever was explained in veda aranyakas aranyakas gave rise to upanishads upanishads are again from veda upanishads actually intellectual processing of thoughts by people who are brainy who are tactful who feel they can win over god they can earn god's blessings by their absolute service to the almighty upanishads you sit besides your guru and think over on the other side your smriti under smriti your sutras and puranas sutras ramayana is a sutra see whatever is earned here by way of veda everything is put in the form of a story there it is given the content form ordinary people can learn from ramayana they may not read vedas because they don't know sanskrit they may not have that time to devote but but listening to ramayan they can know what are the basic tenets of the puranas mahabharata again another great story that evolved during dwapara yuga first one krita yuga treta yuga ramayana dwapara yuga mahabharat bhagavad gita bhagavad gita is a part of mahabharata in the kurukshetra war field krishna preaches arjuna he enlightens arjuna and makes arjuna realize fighting a war to kill the kauravas it is in the service of god it is a rightful act don't get back from that carry it out you are doing your duty as a human being so bhagavad gita is a part of mahabharata then here under puranas you have manusmriti manusmriti is a code of law code of law brought out by manu a great rishi manu okay this is a uh, spread chart of all the different oral and written aspects of the vedic period vedic and post vedic period too okay we move next here a rishi is there see what a rapo between the rishi and the cow he is meditating he is doing tapas his kamandala is here doesn't have clothes on his body except for the loin piece of cloth he has see the cow doesn't want to part it comes and stays beside him mahishi looks after the upkeep of the cow and cow be friends 
it feels it is in the association of the yogi a beautiful picture which explains man animal contract man animal rapo no no doubt in it that he used to worship his worship of the god meant worship of the cow he felt by worshiping the cow he is worshiping the unseen almighty it is in a present form here you have a map of that period see ural mountains are here somewhere up from there he came to central asia from central asia to iran iran to afghanistan afghanistan is here from there he came to the indus plains indus plains this is where the sindhu river flows all the 12 months of the year and here they settle down say kuru is here kurus the kuru dynasty panchala dynasty here all the old dynasties you can find here kunti dynasty kosala dynasty magadha dynasty videha dynasty thar desert is here and this is where most of this vedic people settled down and due to various reasons they started moving into the interior and within years they started occupying the ganges tract ganges basin so this yellow color what you see here it is the area occupied by the vedic people so they spread over almost the northern india the aryans from where did they come they come, came from europe they came from europe through central asia iran afghanistan to india and they settled down here okay 